What do you think of when I say babies? I think, geez, please never give me one of those. Hello everybody, my name is Kim, welcome to today's video. It's been a little while since a video, but things have been pretty busy, that's that's always my excuse. So I actually planned on making a follow-up video to my Mrs. Midwest video that ended up getting a lot of views. This video, do you wanna come take a look? Oh, weird. But then she announced this week that she's pregnant and her fans are the ones who end up watching my videos about her and they already accused me of attacking her when I genuinely do not think I have ever attacked her. So I decided I would put off the video for the time being just because I don't, I don't want to give them any fuel. I don't want to give them any reason to possibly think that I'm attacking her even though I know I'm not. Does that make sense? Also, I almost completely forgot to say we hit 300 subscribers this week. I... What usually happens is it'll like go up and down again. That's just what usually happens. But I saw the number on my screen. So thank you everybody so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel to add more to, to the number. I don't know. <laughs> so onto the topic of today's video. Today we're going to be responding to a video from the YouTuber Classically Abby. <laughs> so there's been a lot of videos popping up about her recently, but in case you haven't heard of her, she is a conservative female YouTuber. She talks about being conservative. She talks about being classic, which seems to be her equivalent of when Mrs. Midwest talks about being feminine. And a somewhat important thing that I think is the reason why a lot of people wanted to check out her channel in the first place. It was the reason I wanted to check out her channel in the first place uh, is because she is also Ben Shapiro's sister. Yeah, you effin with some wet ass p -word. Now I watched a few of Classically Abby's videos and while there was definitely stuff that I disagreed with in it, there was nothing that really like inspired me to make a whole video until I saw this video that she put out just a few days ago that is called... <laughs> Actually before I read this I will just say the title is very good. She definitely knows what she's doing. This video is called If You Care About Women, Be Pro-Life. It's time to fight for motherhood and our most vulnerable. I wonder what this video is going to be about. Let's watch it. What do you think of when I say babies? Personally, I think little fingers and toes, happy gurgles and giggles. Ugh. But we have been sold the story that the most innocent members of our society are stealing our freedom. Sorry to interrupt so soon, but like they they do, right? <laughs> like not saying that that's why you should have an abortion, but they they do. They do. Mothers everywhere have been told to turn on the children growing within their wombs and have been guided to take their lives. Sorry to interrupt again, but I, I don't think they are. No, they're not. Today is the day where we stand up and say we are pro-life. Well, it's a good thing I'm sitting down then. Actually, so is she. There's a lot of talk about abortion today. My body, my choice, and shout your abortion have become calling cards for the pro-choice movement. This movement has created a narrative in which infants are the thieves of our futures and should be done away with when inconvenient. I'm stealing this joke from my boyfriend, by the way, but what bothers me more than her misrepresentation of the pro-choice movement is actually her misuse of the jump cut. <laughs> This movement has created a narrative in which infants are the thieves. It's fine, but it's a little bit distracting to my ADHD brain. Maybe she did that on purpose because she knew I wouldn't pay attention to her. They've used words that are meant to make us feel more comfortable when talking about taking the life of an innocent child in its mother's womb. They've coddled us into hearing the word abortion and not really listening to what it means. These pro-choicers using words to manipulate their point. Why won't they just say that an innocent little teeny tiny baby gets ripped out of the womb, killed and toes and gurgles and when people get a kidney transplant done, why don't we just say it like it is? You are torn open. Your organs rearranged and a part of you is stolen, okay? Stolen. It's obviously not a perfect analogy, but I do wonder if there's something there. Like if somebody who is more vulnerable than you needs an organ transplant and you are a match for them, should you be legally required to give them your organ? Or I wonder if you would feel a little bit unsafe living in a world where you know that at any moment you could be forced to undergo this process that could potentially put your life at risk and changes your body forever and changes your life forever. So then maybe you do actually believe that people should be allowed to carry on somewhat selfishly with their lives for the sake of their own body autonomy, even if it's at the expense of a more vulnerable person. But anyway, yeah, people who are describing this medical procedure are so manipulative. They say it's just a fetus, so we think of it as something other than a baby. They call it an abortion or a termination, so they can avoid saying it's the taking of human life. 
murder. They say, they say, they say, fuck, I'm, I'm so fucking tired of all this. This is something I was trying to point out when I made a video about abortion before, but I just hate that so much of this abortion, anti-abortion debate comes down to language. It drives me crazy. I feel like people on both sides can agree that whatever the fuck you decide to call it, it doesn't change what's actually happening. So can we stop debating whether it's a fetus or an unborn baby and just talk about the actual issue at hand. A baby's life begins at fertilization. The sperm and the egg meet and immediately begin to create a new little human. A baby's heartbeat begins at three weeks. Heartbeats don't really mean anything. It's just something that's had symbolism in our culture for a long time because it's something that, you know, before we had medical science, any person could like feel and somewhat understand. I really do not like these laws that are made about heartbeats specifically because they just don't mean anything. It's literally just the point at which the heart starts beating. Well, let's go back for a second. What did you just say? The sperm and the egg meet and immediately begin to create a new little human. This does bother me a little bit because I don't really think that it's like the sperm and the egg that are creating the human life. I think it's the mother's body. But anyway, did you hear what she said? She said that they begin to create a little human begin to create a new little human. Are you implying that when the sperm fertilizes the egg, it's not a little human, Abby? Between not standing up and making this comment, people are gonna start to think that you're pro-choice. At three weeks, its DNA has defined its eye color, its height, every inch of its appearance. The pro-choice movement will tell you that it doesn't look like a baby but it already has a separate and distinct DNA from its mother. We are not our DNA and we already have DNA that's not ours already floating around inside us, but I already covered that in a video, which I will link to at the end of this one. The pro-choice movement will tell you it doesn't look like a baby, but its heartbeat has already begun. Wait, so she thinks that we're saying that we should kill things because they don't look like babies? Wait, is she trying to say that fetuses do look like babies? Doesn't she think fetuses are babies? I've confused myself. I will admit, I do think that fetuses are kind of ugly. I'm also not the biggest fan of babies. Oh fuck, I forgot, those are the same thing. Oh man, I almost forgot to mention zygotes. Zygotes are pretty cool, or sorry, I meant to say babies. Zygotes are pretty cool actually, they're pretty cute. It's just such a shame that they turn into that. And then later on, unfortunately, they turn into that. And even more unfortunately, eventually they also turn into that. The pro-choice movement will tell you it doesn't look like a baby, but it is one. Okay, good point. I guess it is then. <laughs> Most women don't even know they're pregnant when their unborn child's heart has begun to beat. How is this even a point that you're making in your anti-abortion video? We believe that women should be securely locked into this roller coaster of hell before they even know that they're going on it. At nine weeks, a baby is sucking its thumb. Yeah, and pro-choice people are the ones being manipulative here. Think about it like this. More than 60 million American children have been aborted since 1973. Oh, well, when I think about it that way, we should probably make access to abortion easier. <laughs> As a young woman in 2020, you have been told that abortion should always be an option. I have actually never been told that, and a lot of people who are pro-choice don't think that abortion should always be an option. I think for a lot of people, abortions that happen past the point where the baby can survive by itself outside the womb, I think for some people that becomes kind of a separate conversation. Personally, I think that regardless, the law should not be getting involved in any of this. But anyway, I do think that abortion should always be an option at the time that the woman finds out that she's pregnant. Federal law allows infants to be aborted, terminated, murdered, up until the moment of birth. So the child simply isn't inconvenient. So that the child isn't inconvenient, sure. Also known as so that the mother doesn't die, which is the reason I'm pretty sure why most of those abortions happen. And I know every pro-life person has heard this before, but I'm gonna repeat it again because I think it's true and important. Those abortions are so incredibly rare and they don't happen for like good, happy reasons. It's sad when that has to happen. Human lives are not inconvenient. Hold on a second. Human lives are objectively inconvenient. That's not the reason that I think abortion should be a choice, but you can't possibly be trying to argue that a baby is not an inconvenience. Of course it is. Hell, even adult human lives are kind of inconvenient. We wake up every morning just to try and figure out new ways that we can destroy the world. As a young woman in 2020, you've been told that you get to choose what happens to your body 
That's true. You get to choose what happens with your body. Oh, nice. So it looks like she and I agree. She's a pro-choicer after all. Could you imagine if the video just ended there and it turned out she was pro-choice the whole time? Ah. Uh. A girl can dream, but that's not what happens. That's true. You get to choose what happens with your body, but you don't get to choose what happens with someone else's body. That little baby with DNA that's been separate from your own since conception. I can maybe understand that if she was talking about abortions that happen like super late on in pregnancy, but she's using conception as the beginning. How the fuck can you say that about something that has just been fertilized? When this fetus, baby, human, whatever the fuck you want to call it, is growing inside of you, and it is relying on your life force to survive and draining you so that it can live, I do think that you get to decide what you do with it. As a young woman in 2020, you've been told that pregnancy is hard, hard enough to warrant the killing of your own child. Pregnancy can be difficult. Tearing a baby from the warmth of its mother's womb in pieces is worse. I disagree, I just do. Just because a baby in the womb can't speak for itself doesn't mean we have the right to take its life before it's born. Imagine not being able to speak as the decision of your life or death was decided without your consent, merely because you existed at all. Okay, so I have no idea if the straw man that I'm about to create actually exists or not, but I do think that if you support, you know, the stuff that's being said in this video, but you also support the death penalty, that would be kind of funny. But I also think that if you support this and don't support medical suicide, that would also be kind of funny. I guess the underlying thread is that you can only do shit with your body if somebody else is literally forcing you. As soon as you are making the decision yourself, not allowed. But also, this literally does have to happen. This happens in situations where the person's brain is not capable of making the decision for themselves. We as humans fairly regularly have to make decisions about whether our loved ones live or die without their consent. But instead of being taught to protect our most vulnerable, we are told to destroy them. It's literally called pro-choice. <laughs> it's in the name. As a young woman in 2020, you have been told that it's not a baby at all. It's just a bundle of cells, or worse, a parasite. Okay, so I have seen a lot of people say the clump of cells thing. I mean, that's basically what I'm doing with this baby joke, right? The parasite thing does sound very harsh. I could understand how that would be troubling, especially if you're a person that's never had to go through this or a person who really wants children. But that is how it feels when you have something that you don't want inside you that is growing. But here's the thing. You are its mother. You are growing another person inside of you who depends on your love and care to grow into a little person. What a weird fucking thing to say in your anti-abortion video. And babies do feel pain, at the latest by 20 weeks, but some studies show as early as 12 weeks. That is not true according to the science that we have right now. Studying pain in fetuses is a really weird thing because pain is super subjective and you can't exactly be like, knock knock, yo. You hurting in there? From what I read, it seems like they think that the receptors in the brain that could possibly feel pain develop at about 24 weeks, but there's no evidence that those receptors are actually active at this point. And do you wanna know what I bet hurts a hell of a lot more than an abortion for a baby? Being born. Like, babies come out all squished and bruised. Sometimes they have broken collarbones from being born. If they can get through all that shit just fine, then I don't really think the pain thing matters. As a young woman in 2020, you have been told that being pro-life is anti-woman. Nothing could be further from the truth. You are pro-woman's rights, and that includes the rights of unborn women everywhere. <laughs> what the fuck? Telling women that their life matters less than the life of the unborn woman inside them is supporting women's rights? Okay. Today, Women are misled into choosing their desires over the very lives of their unborn children. To lead a life constantly pursuing pleasure after pleasure as they constantly grow more and more fleeting. To live in the perpetual present with no meaning in sight. And to sacrifice the inestimable value of human life for empty freedom. Holy fucking shit. Okay, let's think about this. A woman is forced to give birth to a baby because if she doesn't, then she's selfishly pursuing her own desires over the desires of the baby, I guess. She has a daughter and the daughter grows up with a mother who has had to deal with the trauma of derailing her own plans that she had for her life in order to raise her daughter. The daughter wants to be different than her mom. She doesn't want to struggle like her mom did. Maybe, you know, she has plans for kids later down the line, but she has stuff that she wants to accomplish in her own life first. 
but then she gets accidentally pregnant. And now that daughter has to make big changes in her life in order to raise her daughter. The question that I have is, at what point in the cycle do women actually get to make the decision for themselves of what they want with their life? With the way that biology works, unfortunately, the male biology will just kind of always have the option to fuck off in some way if they want to. Women are the ones who get pregnant, and they are the ones who suffer the physical consequences of being pregnant. So at what point do women not have to be, in some way, reliant on male biology to direct the course for their life? This is why there are people out there who say that pro-lifers are anti-woman. I don't think most of them intend to be. I don't think that's what they're trying to do. But it's because that for women to have freedom, not empty freedom like Abby's saying, but real genuine freedom to make the choice for themselves of what to do with their life, they need to have the option to decide when their body brings a child into this world and if it's going to bring a child into this world at all. This thing that she says is also really interesting. I'm going to play it again. To live in the perpetual present with no meaning in sight. I think what she's saying here is that if a woman chooses to pursue her own desires, she's living a life with no meaning. No meaning in sight. So I guess when she's saying that a baby's life is important, she means that a baby's life is important unless it grows up to be a woman who doesn't want children or even just doesn't want children at a specific moment in time. There is no worse tragedy for mother and child. As a person who does not want kids and has never wanted kids, I can promise that if I was forced to give birth to a baby, that would turn into a far greater tragedy than an abortion. When a woman fights her own instincts and instead listens to those who tell her to choose her desires over her own child, she has been victimized into leaving behind the role she was born to play, mother. <laughs> there it is, the truth comes out. We had to get through a lot of bullshit to get to this part of the video, but I'm glad she finally just said how she really feels. If you do not support a woman's right to make her own decisions for her life, including whether or not she wants kids, then in my opinion, you are not pro-woman. The vast majority of women who choose to have abortions are making the decision to do it for themselves, and I promise you they are not fighting against their instincts. Not all abortion supporters have this mentality, but it pervades the arguments about how abortion is necessary to women's empowerment and fulfillment. See above. And are there situations where bearing a child is hard, terrifying? Of course. But the pro-choice movement believes you should end a baby's life because of it. No, the pro-choice movement does not. It's literally called pro-choice. There are so many resources to help women through pregnancy and single motherhood. There are so many families waiting to adopt a child if keeping the baby isn't right for you. Tell that to all these kids who are in foster care. She says there's all these people waiting to adopt, and then there's all these kids who are also waiting for families. Like, there's clearly some kind of discrepancy there. Here's the thing. The pro-choice movement has come up with a million ways to justify abortion. All of which we've covered in this video, I think. It can't feel pain yet. It's not a human, it's a fetus. I can't afford to raise a child. Pregnancy is too hard. I want to live a normal life, and having a baby right now just wouldn't work for me. If anyone tried to use this reasoning to kill an adult, we'd call it murder. I say fuck all of that. There's only one way to stop the murder of unborn children. Birth control and proper sexual health education? Being pro-life. Oh. Know that a baby's life is the greatest gift we could ever receive. Not if you don't want a baby. No. Unlearn everything that has been sold to you by those who would sacrifice a baby on the altar of convenience. Sacrifice a baby on the altar of convenience. <laughs> and know that even if at one point you had an abortion, you can come back from it. You are a victim of a broken narrative, one that takes and takes, but never gives. You are welcomed with open arms by those who fight for infants' lives. I am pro-life and proud. Holy shit. Uh... I don't even think I need to say this, but calling somebody a victim for what is maybe the one fucking choice they get to make for themselves, possibly in a situation where all other choice has been taken away from them, is really fucked up. You become a victim, I think, when your choices are taken away from you, which is exactly what this type of messaging does to women. I was actually going to cover a whole other story in this video also, but I think I've talked way too much about this one. I guess I'm a little bit too enthusiastic. Oh. I still have a huge problem with the linguistic problem of the abortion debate, so just for the hell of it, I'm going to say this. If abortion is murder, then sometimes 
I'm okay with murder. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will see you on the next video where I will be talking about something else.